Welcome back students. This is a bonus lecture on using multiple map views in QGIS 3.0. And this is something I just learned about recently. I'd heard that it was going to be available, but I hadn't seen anything about it specifically. And I did see the multiple map views, but it's not very clear how you can select different data to be showing in multiple map views. I don't think it's very intuitive, and at this point it's not well documented at all, but it is a really useful and really powerful feature. and so I wanted to share it with you because that's my intention with this course is to continue updating it as I learn new things and new features become available because I want it to be the best course on QGIS out there on Udemy right now. So I'm going to go to my overview map. We've seen this many times before and adding a new map view is very easy. We can just go to the view menu and click new map view and there we have it. And this is just a panel Right now it's undocked, but like any other panel, you can attach it to the edge or you can attach it to the top or the bottom, wherever you want to put it. I'm going to leave it over here for now. Now by default it shows the same data that's in our main map canvas here. And that's not terribly useful, although you can zoom in and out. And you have a couple of the zoom buttons up here, zoom to selection, zoom full, etc. And we have this icon here. If you hover over it, it says Set View Theme. But if you click on it, it only gives you one option, the default. So that's not very useful at this point. And then we have another option for settings. In this one, we can do some pretty cool things. For instance, we can say we want to synchronize the view center with the main map. And so now these centers are the same. If I go drag this around, you can see that this changes as well. And you can also synchronize the map scale. And that's pretty cool. It's not very useful as it is because you're just seeing the same thing here as what you're seeing over there at the same scale. But you could also have a scale synchronized but scaled a little bit differently. So I just changed the scale factor to 0 0.3 and now they're still synchronized. They move around and if I zoom in and out the ratio between the scales stays the same. And that's pretty cool. And what's even cooler is I can come down here and I can click this which says show map canvas extent and this red box now shows the boundary that corresponds to this map canvas. You notice also that inside that red boundary there's a dot that corresponds to where the cursor is on the main map canvas. So now we're getting into some more useful interesting kinds of things. But what would be really useful is if we were able to show different types of data in the different map views. And when I first started playing around with this I was a little disappointed that we didn't seem to be able to do that. But then I started seeing some postings on the internet where people did have different map canvases. Clearly they had different data in them. And so I realized that there was a way, but it wasn't really well documented. And I kind of figured it had something to do with the Set Map Themes button. And I did some Googling on QGIS 3.0 and map themes. And there's a lot of stuff that came up, but none of it really had to do with this particular meaning of the term theme. But I knew there was a way, so I spent some time playing with it, and I think I got it figured out. So that's what I want to share with you. So I'm going to go back to my settings. I'm going to change the name of the view just from Map 1 to Overview. And I'm going to change the scale factor to even less to 0 0.1. And then what I want to do is I want to have the Open Street Maps background map in this view rather than our environmental constraint data because what I want to do with this view is have an idea of how to get of where exactly this data that I'm looking at in more detail here is located in the real world. And so I want OpenStreetMaps in the background for that. And so I'm going to come up here in my browser under XYZ Tiles. I have one that points to the OpenStreetMap tile map server. So I'm going to double click on that and there you see now we have OpenStreetMaps but again it shows up in both of these windows and I only want it to show up in this one. So it turns out that in a layers panel we have this little button here that's called Manage Map Themes. And if I click on that I'll see that one of my options down here is to add a theme. And so I'm going to add a theme that I'm going to call Overview just like this map view is called Overview. 
I'm going to name them the same. And now when I click Set View Theme, I have an option for the Overview, and that's fine. But now the Overview Theme now has the same exact data that it had when I created it. And if I turn layers on and off, I'm turning them off in the main map canvas, but that's not affecting what's on in the Overview Map. And it's even when I have the Overview Theme selected here, which is kind of odd. And so it wasn't really clear. I don't think it's very intuitive how you actually control what's shown in the overview theme and what's shown in the default theme. And it turns out that what you want to do is set up your layers in here. And so I'm going to turn off all the environmental constraint data. But I'm going to leave the linear project because I think that's helpful with trying to determine exactly where you are. Some of these pipelines are pretty obvious. And if you're familiar with the data, then seeing these pipelines will give you a pretty good idea of where you are on the map. But to set this theme as the overview theme, I have to come back to my theme manager, say replace theme, and I'm replacing the overview theme with what's in the current map document. And so I'm going to click overview. Are you sure you want to replace it? Yes, I am. And now you see we just have the open street maps and the linear project data and none of the environmental constraints. But I can come back in and turn the environmental constraints back on in the main canvas and they don't turn on here because they're not included in the overview theme now. So that's pretty cool for our overview theme. Now let's add a close-up layer. So I'm going to come back to view, add a new map view. I'm going to put this one above the other and I'm going to come to my settings and I rename the view to close-up. And this one, I'm also going to synchronize the view center with the main map. But I'm going to set the scale to 2500. And I'm not actually going to synchronize the scale. I'm going to leave it set at 2500. And so now the centers of all of these are the same. Looks like this changed somehow. I'm going to change this back to 0 0.1. And now if I click on, say, this red dot, and my pan tool is active, that red dot moves to the center here. And so it's also the center here and the center here. But it's not very useful having open street maps on here. That doesn't help me see anything. What I really want to do is have a detailed aerial photo on the close-up. And so I'm going to add Esri imagery layer, turn off open street maps, and then I'll come in and say add theme. The theme is going to be close-up. That also corresponds with the name of the map view. And then under set view theme I'm going to select the close-up theme. And then I'll turn Esri imagery off and leave the open street maps off. And so now I have three different map canvases with three different themes, three different sets of data, but they're all synced together. The centers are going to remain the same. They're just showing different scales. The overview shows 10 times as much, and the close up shows the aerial photo always at 1 to 2500 scale. And so that's really handy because I can go, say, I want to find a specific eagle nest. I can open my attribute table. I'm going to select nest ID 47 and zoom to it. And there's the eagle's nest. There's a close-up view. Here's where it is in space. Looks like it's just south of Greeley. So I have a lot more information available. And I should mention that if you have multiple monitors set up, you can have these different views. I just drag it up into a second monitor. You can't see it because that's not on the screen that's being recorded. But I could have this entire second monitor showing the aerial photo. And then I can see things with a lot more detail. And I'm just going to drag it back down and put it where it was before. So anyhow, that's how you work with different map canvases with different data using themes. And I believe that the 3D view, you can select a theme as well. So if you're using the 3D view, you can have a different theme that's custom designed for the 3D viewer. That also corresponds to the main map view. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next lecture. Thanks for listening. If you want to learn more about some of the great new features of QGIS 3.0, or just more about QGIS in general, I have an entire course available on Udemy called QGIS 3.0 for GIS professionals. As you might have guessed from the name, this is not a beginner course. It assumes that you are already familiar with GIS concepts and are primarily interested in learning how to perform the tasks that you already do in QGIS. I also have four other courses available on web programming and spatial databases if you're interested in those topics. The first is an introduction to the basic concepts of web programming, 
but focused on geospatial technologies. You'll get an introduction to HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and SQL, but more importantly, you'll gain an understanding of how they all work together to create a web-based GIS application. You'll also get introduced to some geospatial-specific libraries, APIs, and extensions like Leaflet, Turf, and PostGIS. The second course is a more in-depth look at the Leaflet JavaScript library for creating web maps and analyzing spatial data in the browser. The third course looks specifically at adapting WebGIS applications for use on mobile devices, including working with device sensors like GPS and dealing with situations where you have no data available. The fourth course covers spatial databases and spatial SQL with an emphasis on using PostGIS as the database and QGIS as the client. You'll learn about manipulating the data, querying your data, developing custom functions and triggers to automate your business logic, and administering the database to keep it running smoothly. And I'm currently working on a course on server-side programming for WebGIS applications that will explain how to interact with a central database to query data stored in PostGIS and save data that was created in your web application. This course will also go through the process of building a login system to manage and control access to your web applications. And I expect this course to be completed by the end of May 2018. So if you have an interest in any of these courses, please go to udemy.com and you can use the coupon code COURSE4 to register for any of these courses for only $20. And if you want more information about any of these courses and other geospatial topics, you can check out my blog at the address above or just Google geospatial brainstorming.